Hello again, my friends. It's Mrs. Walters, and we're back to do some art. Last week, we started our line bubbles project, and we worked on creating some lines on different sheets of paper. So you should have your three pieces of paper. Um, if you have a second, go get them now so we can follow along. You can also wait to the end of this video if you want. So I did one paper with straight lines, one paper with wavy lines and one paper with zigzag lines and I decided that I want to cut out some circles from my zigzag line paper and my wavy line paper so I'm going to use my straight line paper as the base this is what we're going to glue everything on okay so you're gonna to have to do the same thing if you didn't last week if last week you didn't pick which of your papers you want to be the base now would be a really good time to think about which one you are going to want to be your base. So if you haven't already watched the how to cut a circle video, I think it's a really good video to show you how to cut a circle. And we are going to be cutting a few circles today. So if you didn't already watch it, I highly recommend that you pause this video and go watch the video on how to cut a circle so you can get some practice. So last week you should have traced on the back of two of your papers that you wanted to use as bubbles, a circle. So I have two circles on my wavy line page and I'm going to go ahead and cut them out. So I'm going to flip my paper over to the back where my circles are and I'm going to cut. And just remember, um, if you watched the how to cut a circle video, that the best way to cut a circle is to cut a straight line until you get to the line you traced and then to gently turn the paper as you cut. If we stop turning, we have to stop cutting. Um, we can't stop and then cut and then stop and then cut. The paper has to turn as we cut because that's what creates the beautiful curved line in our cuts. We should be keeping, we should be keeping our scissors pretty straight up and down. And the only thing that should be moving is your hand. So there's circle number one. Look at those cool lines. I'm gonna move my chair so you guys can see me cut out circle number two. So I'm gonna cut a straight line all the way to the circle where I traced. And then I'm gonna use my hand that's not holding the scissors to gently turn the paper. And I know this is kind of a hard skill and it's going to take some practice, but that's why we're doing it. So we can practice and we can become better at it. Okay, cut, keep cutting all the way to the end. All right, so now I've got my second circle. So now you should have two wavy line circles. Set those aside. We're not gonna do anything with them quite yet. And then you can get out your other paper. Um, I did zigzag lines on mine. But remember, you could have done any kinds of lines um, as long as they filled the paper. And then another optional thing you could have done that I chose to do is I chose to do the circles on this page a little bit different size. So if we look at the circle that has the wavy line on them, they're a little bit smaller. Um, and remember back to the contrast video that you just watched, I hope. Um, different sizes of shapes can help uh, make our eyes see contrast. So different colors, different sizes, and different textures. So our artwork, when it's done, is going to have all of those things. It's going to have texture and colors and different sizes of things. So let's go ahead and cut out these big circles. Again, we're gonna cut a straight line all the way to the circle. And when we get there, we're going to gently turn and cut. Another thing I like to do when I'm cutting a circle is I don't like to take big swipes with the scissors. I like to cut um, in slow, small cuts because then if I make a mistake, it's probably not going to be a big mistake. It'll probably just be a little mistake that I can go back and fix or it won't be very noticeable. But if you take big chunks every time you open and close your scissors, you might make a big mistake. That's harder to fix. All right, one. One more. Cut 
foot up to the circle, a straight line, and then start turning. I'm also turning kind of slow. I don't want to try to turn the circle on the paper too fast because then I might go faster than I'm able to cut. All right, there's our second circle. So now you should have a total of four circles. If you wanna do one more or one less, you could. Um, we don't wanna fill our paper completely so we can't see any of the blue lines, but we do want enough circles so that we can see the difference in texture, the difference in color, and the difference um, in the shapes. So, now we're, we get to do the fun part. We get to glue them on. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Fun part. So you're going to need for this part some glue. If you don't already have some glue, I'm using a glue stick. If you have glue in the bottle, use that. Um, as always, a little bit goes a long way. And let's do it. All right. So another good thing um, I can recommend when you're an artist and you're making um, an artwork or you're doing an art project is before you start gluing or cutting or painting, set out all your supplies and see what you have and see if there's anything else you need. So right now I have my base paper, my paper with the blue lines. I have all the circles I cut out, one, two, three, four, and I have my glue. That's all I'm gonna need for the next part. Um, we might do one extra step. When this is all done, we'll have to see. Um, but for this part, these are all the materials I need. Before I glue on, this part's really important too. Before I glue on, I wanna make sure that I am sure where I want all these. So I'm just going to place them where I think I might want them. And I'm gonna move them around, kind of adjust them. All right, I think I like it like that. Um, maybe I'll turn this piece right there. So I did that on purpose so that all the lines look like they're going in different directions and that kind of adds to our contrast. So now I'm gonna take my glue. And remember, if you're using stick glue, you don't need to turn it all the way up. It just needs it to be a little bit above the tube. Okay, and I'm gonna take my first circle, I'm gonna flip it over, and I am only gonna put glue around the outside edge because that's the only place I need it. I'm gonna flip it over. This part is super important if you're using stick glue. And then I'm gonna press really super hard around the edge. Now, if you're using bottle glue, um, the squeeze glue, um, you do not have to use as much. A little bit goes a long way. You know, what we say in my art class is dot, dot, not a lot, because if we use too much, our glue will overflow and get everywhere and get messy. Um, but if you're using liquid glue in the bottle, you probably don't have to press as hard, um, but do only do it around the outside edge. All right, now we're gonna do the other one. Another thing that you need to remember about um, stick glue is um, stick glue, we use it because it dries really fast. So stick glue um, dries really fast in a couple minutes. So if you are, if you put your stick glue on the back of your circle and then you don't put it right on if you leave it to sit for a minute, it's probably going to get too dry and you won't be able to stick it on. So make sure you're just quickly putting it on and then rubbing the edge down. If you have a part that looks like it's sticking up, you probably didn't put enough glue on there.
have one more. And then I think we're gonna do one extra thing to this picture just to really show off the contrast. So I'm gonna glue on my last one. Last bubble. All right. So my last bubble is glued on. So we have the four bubbles on the lined paper. Um, now, if you want to do the last step with me, you can pause the video, um, or if you might have it with you right now, you can just let it play. Um, but I am going to go grab a black marker. Um, you can also use a black crayon or a color pencil. So I'm gonna go grab a black marker and we're gonna do this very last step in just a second. All right, so I have my black marker. I'm gonna use a Sharpie um, because it's just what I had in my desk but you, I recommend that you use something that's water-based that will wash off your hands. So a Crayola marker um, is usually a good bet or again, a black crayon or black color pencil. I'm using black because black helps things stand out and it helps contrast. In our, our art class, a lot of times, we will go over things with black paint or make a line with black oil pastel or even black marker. And so that's one reason why it helps contrast. So here's what I'm going to do with my black marker. And this is something we're gonna to have to do really carefully. Is I'm gonna go around just the very edge of all my circles. I don't wanna get marker inside the circle. I just wanna get marker around the outside edge. Because I want it to look kinda of like a bubble. And because the background of the papers is white on both the papers, this black back or this black outline is going to help it stand out more. What do you guys think so far? Is it looking a little better? I like it. Oops, you can see I made a little mistake. And you know what, mistakes are okay because mistakes give us a chance to learn and get better. And even teachers and grown-ups make mistakes in their art. All right, so now I have outlined all of my bubbles with black marker. I'm thinking I wanna do even one more thing. So I'm thinking that I want to go back because right now it looks like all the bubbles have the same line around them. I wanna go back and I wanna make it a little different. I think I wanna make these two big bubbles have a little bit wider of a line. And since I already messed up here and made it a little bit chunkier on this side, then it'll be kind of easy to do that. And I'm actually gonna go back with crayon and show you how you can use crayon to do this.
All right. So now that I'm done, we have even more contrast. So we have a thick line around both of our big bubbles, a thin line around our smaller bubbles, and then we have all the other types of contrast. We have our texture contrast, our colored contrast, because we have lots of different colors, our shape contrast, lots of different contrasts. So I hope you had fun making our contrast art, our line bubbles. Um, I would really love to see your art. So don't forget, uh, after you create your artwork, your beautiful artwork, to take a picture, have an adult help you to take a picture um, and upload it to our discussion board. It's in the same place as the lesson. Look for the little folder that says, post your photo here and follow the directions. Thank you for participating and I'll see you next week. Bye.